On this journey, you're going to have to be willing to try new things. If not, you will be unhappy. And it's possible that you might be unhappy in the beginning anyway because you're not used to the new foods. But this recipe I created so that you can get an eye full of color and maybe, just maybe, this dish will cause you to at least want to try something new since it's so colorful and beautiful. Believe me, in the beginning, I didn't want to eat this food either, but I kept putting one foot in front of the other. And before you know it, I started loving the new food. Hey y'all, welcome to What Chelsea Eats. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to share with you this recipe for the stir fry that is just full of colors and full of flavor and it will help you on your fibroid healing journey. So if you want to see how I made this dish, stay tuned. So I'm using my 360 cookware. You all know that I love my 360 cookware. If you are interested in learning more about 360, there's a link down in the description box below this video. They have a 25% discount for this cookware if you put in the code WCE25. But as you can see, I'm starting off with some water in the pan. You guys know I do not cook with oil. I don't recommend you eating oil if you're trying to heal reproductive issues. I rough chopped some garlic and that's what I'm starting with and then I'm going to quickly add my onions to the pan. You can use any kind of onions that you want and just for reference sake the recipe will be down in the description box below this video with all the ingredients and all the measurements for each ingredient. Just so you know, I do not like my vegetables to be soggy, so I will not be cooking this stir fry to death. The vegetables in this recipe will still have some life in left in them whenever this is done. Be sure to keep some water nearby. As you cook, the water will start to evaporate and you will need some water to continue to keep the vegetables from sticking to the pan. The next ingredient is mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I would put all different types of mushrooms in this dish. It just so happened that what I had on hand were some white plain mushrooms and that's why I added it. But you can add different textures of mushrooms, shiitake, lion's mane, whatever it is that you feel is good for your dish you can experiment also some of the vegetables that i use for this recipe if you don't like them switch them out you can even add more vegetables one thing that would have gone well in this recipe is broccoli i wasn't planning on using carrots for this recipe but i had two lonely carrots in my refrigerator so i said what the heck let me throw these in here and that just goes to show you can put whatever you want in this recipe it doesn't even have to be the vegetables that i choose use what you have use what's on sale be creative use the vegetables that you like if you like green peppers put green peppers in there if you like jalapenos put jalapenos in there like just make it your own now next i'm adding some red peppers i love red peppers and this red pepper was so fresh it was so fragrant it just made the dish smell so good. I really wish that I had smell-o-vision. And I was making this. My husband was like, I'm going to have a salad and a smoothie today. And after I was done cooking it, he was like, um, can I have some of that stir fry you made? I was like, wow, did it smell that good? He's like, yeah, I got to have some. So, And he wasn't even hungry. <laughs> so next is zucchini. I use zucchinis for a lot of things, not just soups. I use them for salads. I use them, I spiralize them. I use them in salad dressings. What I do for salad dressings is I peel the green skin off and I put the inside of the, the zucchini 
in my salad dressings to create a creamy texture. If you would like me to show you how I do that, comment below if you'd like to know. Next we have some yellow squash. And the thing I like about zucchini and yellow squash is it pretty much doesn't really have any flavor. So you can make it taste however you want it to taste. You just add the herbs and spices, which are coming up soon, that you want to add that will give you the flavors that you want to have it like you can make this recipe taste like mexican food you can make it taste like italian food you can make it taste like cajun food like you just have to be creative with the spices and i think when i when this is all said and done it this has like a sweet savory taste to it but you be the judge let me know if you make it i would love to know your opinion on what the flavors come out to be if you follow my recipe to a tea so I was going to make a sauce for this recipe and I started mixing it and I tasted it and it was nasty so I didn't add it so <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing it to you I, I had every intention on sharing it but it I just couldn't do it it was disgusting so we'll try again for a sauce another day so now it's time to pull all these flavors together with some herbs and spices so i put all the herbs and spices in this dish and i stirred it all together and let the flavors meld i even added a little bit more water and it turned out so good it was it smelled so good now when you're making yours you may like more spices so start with what i give you because i i was very conservative on the amounts of of spices that i actually added to this dish and if you feel like you need more just add more and it's never me if i don't add any fresh greens to the end of a dish so what i'm doing is i'm just stirring this through this dish I'm not heating it through to cook the greens, so I want to have these greens um, meld together in the dish just to give it some flavor from the herb, but I'm not cooking it so much where it, it loses all its nutrients. And I actually had a little bit more of the pers parsley, this is flat leaf parsley that I'm using left over. I could have used more. But I think what I added was just fine. You do you. If you don't like flat leaf parsley, you can use cilantro. You can use spinach. You can use kale. You can always add some greens to something to make something more nutritious and healing. So I just wanted to add that little tidbit. And I just love cooking with these 360 cookware pots and pans. They're so versatile. If you haven't checked them out, I recommend you go down in the description bar and click the link and check them out. They're excellent for non-toxic cooking. I also want to say for this recipe, I used red quinoa. Now I have tasted red quinoa before, but this is the very first time that I have cooked it, at least to my recollection. My recollection. I do not remember ever cooking it. But if you want to know how to make the perfect quinoa, I will leave a link to the video down in the description box that shows you how to make perfect quinoa because lots of people won't eat it because they think it tastes bad. The, the key is knowing how to cook it properly. So if that's you, after you've watched this video, go on over to that video and learn how to make it the right way so that you're happy with your quinoa experience. And just so you know, quinoa is one of those foods that is full of protein. For those of you who are so concerned about protein, although when you're trying to heal, you want to stay away from too much protein because it interferes with the healing process. We need to cut the protein down um, because women with fibroids and reproductive issues are on protein overload. And that's a whole nother topic if you would like me to talk about that put a comment below and I'll be happy to talk to you about what protein has to do with reproductive health. Anyway, this is easy to make. Go click on the video if you would like to learn how to make it properly. My red quinoa is all done, is perfect, and I'm getting ready to serve it up with this stir fry. 
And I also have a little surprise ingredient that I'm going to add with my stir fry. Stay tuned. So there you have it, the finished product. We've got the red quinoa, the stir fried vegetables, and they're not fried with oil, they're fried with water. <laughs> and also my surprise ingredient, which is butter beans. I absolutely love butter beans. I put a little bit on the side just as an added um, texture in the dish. And I hope you all really enjoyed this recipe. I hope that you take the tips and tricks that I give you when I make these recipes and put them to use in your own cooking and then put your own little twist on it. And if you like this video, please like it. Share it with somebody you think would be, it would benefit. And also subscribe if you like the content that I put on my channel. And just so you know, if no one told you that they love you today, Chelsea in North Carolina loves you very much. And I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.